Thank you for tuning in to a new installment of JNN Sports, the JNN's Culture Show. And my first guest is Coach Ben Garner. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Cool. Um, I'm doing great. So I want to talk about sort of the basketball season as a whole and mm -hmm. then kind of where we are standing right now. So mm -hmm. uh, starting out the season, we had a bit of a rocky start. Mm -hmm. had a losing stretch at one yeah. point. But yeah. we've since rebounded to our winning mm -hmm. ways. So what are some of the challenges that the team faced during that span? And what are some things that we did to overcome those? Well, first, I mean, every year our goal is to always put us in a situation where we're ready for January and so one of the parts of that is we're going to schedule some of the best teams in the state um, we're not going to we're not going to duck any punches or anything like that and here at Madison Central we're trying to be one of the elite programs and so to do that you got to play the best to be the best um, and one of our big challenges that we had is, is playing without our full roster you know we had we had multiple football guys that are big parts of our success and big are going to be big parts of our success that just weren't out here and then on top of that I think all but one guy I think we have one guy returning that had any type of varsity experience at all and so kind of tackling that early schedule um, and doing that with a bunch of guys who hadn't really experienced varsity basketball up until that point um, is a big time challenge. Yeah. So uh, speak, I mean you just touched on it one key thing that's always sort of hindered the team at the start of the season is we have some star players still playing football yeah. and then they have to move over to basketball and yeah. another example of that this year is senior Isaiah Spencer yeah. who goes from balling on the field to balling yeah. on the court. So yeah. What does he mean to the team not only in the locker room but on the court well you, you get the nail on the head I mean he's I mean he's a big leader for us um, in all aspects of what's going on um, and so as you look at his presence he's a four-year starter um, moved him up when he was in the ninth grade which is a rarity that you have a kid that's ready to go at that age right. and ready to perform at that age on this level um, and he was able to do that and then you look at how he's just walked right in you know you rarely do you see a talent with a guy who can play his last football game on a Friday night and then go into a big showcase against Holmes County Center Central, who's your defending 5A state champions, and he rolls out there and has 18 points on night one, and right. um, and then on top of that, he's we always joke and say he's him, you know, he just kind of he kind of has that presence about him where he's going to go make plays, he's always going to be guarding the best player on the other team, um, and then he's the guy if you need a bucket, he's going to go find one for you, and that's something we desperately needed early in the season. So to have that is a big deal, and but super excited about having him back for this home stretch and getting into district play is going to be big. Last question here. Uh, we've got a tough matchup tonight yep. versus Callaway. Yep. Yep. Starting, yep. the, starting the season series out against mm -hmm. them. Averaging nearly 60 a game. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. what are some keys heading into this Charger matchup that you've been preaching to your team? It's Callaway. You know, and so traditionally they they are one of those Jackson powerhouses and, and they love their ball and they play good ball and they've got he's got a great set of guys, two young guards that are really difficult um, and then a couple of bigs that can do, can hurt you in a lot of ways. So, going into that atmosphere and that environment um, is going to be a challenge challenge um, but again that's what you want you want it you want to go play those you know you want to go play in those big environments and so going into it we know we've got to handle the environment we know we've got to go in and be able to not allow that to overwhelm us to start with not allowing it to get out of that and then I need some guys to step up be solid defensively um, not give up e any easy what we call bunnies um, where you know they're, they're getting paint touches offensive mm -hmm. rebounds you have to be the most physical team you got to be the most intense team um, and if we're able to do that you know, you, you feel good about being competitive in, in that environment and, and excited right. about it. So yeah. that's all I have, Coach. All right, man. I appreciate you. Uh, now we yeah. move over to head sports anchor Annalise Kirk, who will cover all things MT Sports. Hey there, Jags. I'm Annalise Kirk back with another sports update. Last week, play started on Tuesday as the bowling teams took on Pearl but got swept. Also on Tuesday, the basketball teams got back to their exhibition games after the county tournament, playing at Northwest Rankin. The men's team narrowly lost by three, and the same could be said for the Lady Jags, also losing by three. On Thursday, both soccer teams competed against Germantown in the jungle. The boys' soccer team lost one to two, but the Lady Jags showed out, beating the Mustangs by three. Lastly, your soccer teams closed out the week on Saturday, hosting Tupelo and coming away with mixed results. The men's team cruised to a win, but the Lady Jags would narrowly lose by one. Your men's basketball team kicked the week off, destroying Pearl in the jungle by 21 points. On Tuesday, both soccer teams went over to Ridgeland to compete, with both teams coming away with shutout wins. On Friday, both basketball teams will take the trip over to Callaway to compete. And finally, your soccer teams play Murrah on Saturday in a doubleheader that will end out the week. That's all for this time. Make sure you check in with us next week for all your future updates and scores. Fabricio Neira is a well-rounded student athlete who still finds time to give back to his community. Between soccer, cross country, and volunteering, Fabricio is a true display of exceptional integrity and commitment. Fabricio is a part of the soccer and cross country team at Madison Central. He has been a member of both teams for several years. 
Soccer has really helped me grow in a lot of aspects. Um, it's really helped me be a better uh, a team member, um, really showed me how to put hard work and determination to achieve the goals you want to achieve. Um, and I really think those are really important things for the future because in any like work environment, you're gonna need those, those qualities to become a successful person. I really want to emphasize like the hard work and determination that soccer has taught me because um, you know a lot of times in the 100 degree weather running full field sprints it's really it really sucks but you know it's you know it's towards a goal that you want to achieve and it's something you really want to do so if you put your mind to it you can do it so yeah Fabricio has been impactful for the entire team I think we have uh, players who have uh, kind of gravitated a little bit closer to him um, just because of his academic prowess and that's one of the things that we stress within the program is uh, student athletes, students first, athletes second. Um, so I know from the academic perspective, he is one of the players that we definitely look up to and, and continue to, to rely on to be able to set the bar. Um, outside of that, on the athletic standpoint and the soccer standpoint, he's one of the players that gives 100% every time. Fabricio has displayed commitment throughout cross country as he wraps up for his senior year. What sticks out to me about Fabricio is his spirit. Like he's He's part of the soul of the team. Just the way he energizes the guys, it just it just helps our team as well, like our morale, our ability to run. It just makes it feel more like a family. He's helped me enjoy the sport. Like it's it's great to run with guys like him. They just make the sport more enjoyable, just as a whole. And I'm grateful for being able to run with them. I would say um, cross country has taught me like some of the same lessons that soccer has taught me: hard work, determination, you know, teamwork also being kind of like a team leader. In addition to staying involved in sports, Fabricio also prioritizes volunteering in his community as a member of the Beta Club at Madison Central. So when I volunteer with Fabricio, it's really just been a great experience because he's got such a servant's heart and a good work ethic and you never have to ask him to do much and he just does work by himself because he's just got a good motivation to do it intrinsically. Well, when I do community service, what I really hope to do is to just make people happier, you know, make people feel um, like they're welcomed and that they, that people care about them and that, you know, um, people are there to help them when they need help. Um, I just want people to feel like they have a place and that they need, that they just have help whenever needed. And that's really what I hope that the community, I leave in my community. Fabricio is a true representation of a well-rounded student. Make sure you come see him and the boys soccer team compete.